The Caribbean region produces less than 1% of total global emissions, yet suffers disproportionate impacts that affect over 35 million citizens. Realizing meaningful climate action, including limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, is possible, but will be largely determined by the investment decisions made over the next decade. The IPC6 assessment report clearly indicated that global temperature has already increased by 1.1 degrees Celsius since 1850. And it's on uh, it's projected to be able to reach 1.5 perhaps as early as this decade. Now, you might uh, not uh, really worry about the specific uh, percentages, but what you do notice is how much hotter it is getting and how uncomfortable it is to be working outside um, during 100 degree days. In keeping with the objectives of the UNFCC and the Paris Agreement, the Green Climate Fund is committed to supporting developing nations in the implementation of their climate adaptation and mitigation actions. The Readiness and Preparatory Support Program prepares countries to access GCF funds to propel climate action activities. Core to the GCF climate action is the utilization of a country-driven approach, which enables developing countries to lead GCF programming and implementation. Using this approach, the center has implemented a 45 million U.S. dollar funding proposal in Barbados and over 25 million U.S. dollars in readiness and preparatory projects have been approved in 12 CARICOM countries. The GCF has endorsed this entity work program, which is valued at US $300 million, uh, supporting uh, seven CARICOM member states um, in climate action. These are both adaptation projects and mitigation projects. The country-driven approach is very, very important. As a matter of fact, it's, GCF, it's one of GCF's main principles. So we do look at you know, trying to provide the support that is vital to support the countries themselves, not, not just the region, but the countries themselves. So what, what is good for Jamaica? What is good for Belize? What is good for Antigua? There, you know, while they have similarities, there, there are a lot of differences between them. And from that perspective, the support that we provide has to be tailored to each and every country in the region. Vital to understanding climate change and variability is historical weather observations. In the Bahamas, the country's meteorology department is benefiting from a readiness and preparatory support project digitizing more than 55 years of meteorological records. Data made available through this project will aid in local climate projections and national decision making that will influence climate adaptation and mitigation actions for the future. The health sector is also directly affected by climate change. Impacts from increased storm intensification and rising temperatures are affecting the health of all our citizens. The relationship between temperature and disease is also another very important one. So the warmer it gets and the hotter it gets, you might find that different pathogens and different disease vectors become more common. And as a result, the number of incidences of these uh, diseases increase uh, in the population. So climate change has a huge impact on health and our, and our way of life. And it impacts everything, industries, uh, and as well as this very increasing issue of, of, uh, of health and, and the implications on women and children, the elderly. All of these are very important considerations um, and impacts from the effects of climate change. Increasing the technical capacity of the healthcare workforce through the development of a national training curriculum on climate change and health are being carried out by readiness and preparatory support projects in Trinidad and Tobago and the Bahamas. Both are supporting the development of policies and systems for mainstreaming climate change in the healthcare system. With new capacity and systems in place, the health sector will have greater ability to improve their adaptive capacity to climate change and access additional green climate funds. In addition to these projects and others, 
the Center is also executing the Building Capacity for a Regional Approach to Climate Action in the Caribbean Readiness Project, which will enhance the objectives set out in the regional framework and complement the activities in the implementation plan. Some of the project activities include enhancing the Center's ability to provide technical support and guidance for the development and submission of high-quality funding proposals to the GCF, developing a computerized management information system and upgrading the Center's online portals to disseminate information about climate change and the GCF, revising procurement guidelines to ensure that gender considerations are mainstreamed into all systems and revising financial and accounting systems, and finally, developing a plan of action to upgrade the Center's accreditation to the GCF. Despite all the groundwork done in the areas of climate mitigation and adaptation, the Caribbean still faces a clear and present danger. As a region, our collaborative advocacy efforts and the strengthening of our partnerships to advance our climate action efforts are crucial to ensuring a climate-safe future for our people, building resilience, securing our future.